What are some of the references you found in your research? Where have you seen this? Well, I went into the Gnostic Gospels, and we're very fortunate today to have access to the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Gnostic Gospels, both of which were discovered in 1945, one in Egypt and the other in, in Israel, because they, tell, they paint this extraordinary picture that we haven't known about for almost 2,000 years. And one of the key figures they talked about in the, in the Dead Sea Scrolls was, named, was Enoch. Enoch was the first human to actually go through this process of transformation from a human into an angel. And so they highly revered Enoch as one of their sources. And in fact, the Book of Enoch was also discovered. And it talks all about this transformation and, and our ability to scale this ladder to heaven. And the Dead Sea Scrolls say that Enoch traveled with God in the heavens. That's right. Enoch was the first human to walk with God. He became an immortal being and he travels the stars now with God according to that book. And when you think about that, this is what movies like Stargate and Contact are really trying to get us to wake up to is the, the existence of these stargates that link Earth with other places in the cosmos. And it's incredible to think that, wait a minute, Jesus and Mary Magdalene and all the disciples, this is what they were really talking about, is how do we transform ourselves and access these gateways, and in particular, they believed one existed in Sion in Jerusalem. And you show in your book so many images mm -hmm. of a cloak they put on, or mm -hmm. getting into a box, right. or even Jesus holding a wand. Yes. This is part of the whole mystery tradition of Jesus that the traditional church doesn't discuss. And what most Christians don't know is, is that in Christian art, when they show Jesus ascending into the heavens, he's sitting on a throne, and he is portrayed enthroned. Well, that throne is the Ark of the Covenant. And so this tells me that, contrary to what traditional Christians believe, Jesus did acquire the Ark of the Covenant, the rod or wand. He certainly produced the manna at Capernaum with Mary Magdalene, and the anointing oil was present at the crucifixion and resurrection. So that tells me that Jesus was part of a group that assembled this kit of tools, this ascension kit, Stargate kit, and used it. So he's our first Merlin. He's the, <laughs> the first Harry Potter. <laughs> And this is part of the story of Jesus where he, he transfigures as well. And what that word means is to change form, in particular to change from a human into an angelic being, a light being. And the key symbol for this transformation was this cloak or garment of light. And this is a story that actually predates Jesus. There's a... a Joseph and the Technicolor Green Coat. You got it, <laughs> right. Elijah is another one. He is believed to be a reincarnating figure that actually, he reincarnated as John the Baptist. But when he was Elijah, he went up into the heavens in a whirlwind. And it, which today we would call a vortex or a portal. And as he's going up, he turns to his priest, Elisha, and transmits to him his garment of light, telling us that this cloak or garment of light is actually a transmittable, probably a vibration that these avatars possessed, and they could simply, by touching you, could give you the vibration of this garment. So Elijah, Joseph from the Old Testament, mm -hmm. had this garment. Yes. And Jesus. And Jesus, right. And the question is, where is it today? Do these things actually exist today? I believe they do. In fact, Christian prophecy and Jewish prophecy says that the Messiah, the Christ or Messiah, will, will recover these items at the time of the second coming. They're actually kept in the Ark of the Covenant somewhere. So where do you think is the location of the Ark of the Covenant? The Bible says the Ark of the Covenant was taken by God off the planet and taken to another place, maybe to the heavenly Sion where Christ's throne is located. I mean, after the resurrection, Christ goes and sits on his throne, which is in Sion, which is in some cosmic location. I, have, I located it at the center of the galaxy. That's where my trail of research led me. And along the way, you see this umbilical cord that links Earth with the center of the galaxy or with Sion that looks like what we today think of as a wormhole, this cosmic transportation system snaking its way through the galaxy. And in one of the middle zones, you see actually the throne of the second coming, which is the, pre they call it the prepared throne of Christ. So when Christ returns, he will recover this throne. The base of the throne is the Ark of the Covenant, and it has the cross attached to it. And inside the Ark of the Covenant is this rod or wand, a flask of manna, and this sacred oil. So the picture begins to emerge that there's this sort of kit 
that gets put together by this messianic figure and it may be happening in our time. And what's so interesting about your book is you don't just give one or two examples. There are hundreds of examples of how people over the centuries yeah. have captured exactly that premise. Exactly. And it's just now we're being enlightened about it. Right. Thanks to all of your research. Thank you. With The Secret of Scion. Mm -hmm. And I wish you much success with your book. Thank you, Linda, very much. Thank you. And thank you, everybody.